What's going on guys? It's your boy CSW and welcome back to London to NFL on the go. We're back at practice, but this time it's with the Tennessee Titans as they get ready for their matchup against the Baltimore Ravens in London. And I'll be catching up with some of the biggest stars on the team. I'm here with the one and only DeAndre Hopkins. Thank Welcome you, to London. Man. Pleasure, man. Pleasure. How's the flight been? Oh, man, but I was amazing. You know, I, I got some London friends that uh, come to America, so, uh, you know, they told me what to expect, but yeah. being in London, uh, I don't think it, you know, compares to how they explain it. Hospitality is amazing. Oh, I love that. So you're in your first season with the Titans. What's the best bit about moving to Tennessee? Uh, the best thing about moving to Tennessee, outside of country music, yeah. uh, is the hospitality. Nashville is uh, it's in the South. Yeah. Uh, good food, good people. Uh, and just, you know, everyone's nice, man. Mm -hmm. Everyone, uh, you know, they speak to you, look you in your eyes. It's, uh, it's, it's an amazing city. So you've got a lot of fans in London and they all want to know you've been one of the most explosive receivers of the last decade. What's been your favorite highlight play? My favorite highlight play, I would have to say is my Christmas catch against the Steelers. Ooh. To be part of a great team, here's Hilton blitzing off the slot again. Passer Hopkins, oh my goodness. Did he catch that? Did he catch that? <laughs> it, was, uh, it was on a great, a great defender. Uh, tipped it to myself, caught it with one hand, yeah. uh, and actually kind of stepped over him to get two feet down. The difficult in that catch is uh, it wasn't easy, uh, but I actually practiced it in my head before. Oh, I bet. <laughs> That's a nice Christmas present. Right. But what about the Arizona catch against the Bills. Shotgun. Murray, out of the pocket. Seven seconds. Six seconds. Murray heaves it downfield. It is, oh, it's caught! It is caught! DeAndre Hopkins! Where's that rank? Is that top five? That's number, I would say that's number three. Oh, really? Yeah. So what's in between? I would say the Christmas catch, yep. the number two catch I would have to say is against uh, New York Giants, mm. my second year in the NFL. That catch right there, I would say, kind of put me on the spotlight yeah. of, of being one hand catcher, you know? And then that, that the Hail Mary, obviously Epic. that's, yeah, man, that was, that, was, that was crazy. And you've had one of the lowest drop rates in history. Like last three seasons, you've had over 300 passes thrown to you, dropped three balls. How much did playing hoops growing up play into that? Uh, a lot. Uh, you know, playing in hoops, your your hand eye has to be there. And, you know, I was a rebounder, point mm. guard as well. So uh, just kind of beating the man to the ball yeah. before he gets there. And obviously my hand size helps as well. I wear a 5S glove. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so thank you, mom and dad, you know, for the genetics. But, uh, Blessings. <laughs> nah, but, uh, you know, just hand eye coordination. And playing basketball helped a lot. Getting yeah. off the ground faster than, than other people. That and plays that a role. work as well. Yeah, man. What do you think is the best part of your game? Uh, I would say the best part of my game is my my football IQ. Mm. Um, I'm not the fastest, not the tallest, but I know how to get open. Mm. Uh, I know how to read defenses, and uh, you know I'm, I'm reliable. Mm. You know I play with with a lot of quarterbacks. Yep. never complain. Uh, so you know it, it has a it has a lot to do with your mindset as mm. well. You, you can't go out and complain no matter who's throwing the ball. Mm -hmm. You got to catch it. And you've had some big matchups against some corners. Who's been the toughest corner you've gone against? Toughest corner I've gone against, I would have to say, is Jalen Ramsey, mm. uh, because him and I played each other two times a year. Yep. Up until he got traded from Jacksonville when I was in Houston, so we knew each other game very well, and we only I only played most corners one time a year, but mm. I played him two times a year, so he would give me some games, I would get him some games. So uh, you know, it's mutual respect. There. What made him difficult to go against? Uh, his size. Mm. He's uh he's basically a receiver playing DB. Yeah, uh, he's you know six one, six two. Uh, the guy can jump just like a receiver, and he's fast. So uh, you know you don't get too many corners that are, are are fast and has good footwork like him. Do you like it when the corner will follow you side to side on the I, field? I love that. You like the matchup? That. Yeah, man, because that uh, that takes my game to a different level as well. Yeah, feeling like someone think they can guard me the whole game. Uh, you know, it doesn't happen too often anymore. Mm. Uh, you know, but but people still get paid like a number one corner. Yeah. But I respect the old, the old school guys who who follow the top receiver no matter where they were in a slot outside. Because that's tough. That's real tough, especially when if you go into a game week and you're game planning, you're prepping, and you know a guy's going to follow you. Mm -hmm. What are you looking for in terms of your preparation going against that corner? Uh, I'm looking for someone who has success against them. I watch mm -hmm. I watch uh, you know whatever team or whatever receiver has success against them to see you know okay what are what are some of the things that they did, and after that it's just you know me 
going out and, and knowing that I'm gonna beat the man across from me. So changing gears a bit. All right. It's Friday the 13th. Okay. Halloween season. You're a big Halloween fan, costume yeah, wise. Yeah, man. What's your all time costume <laughs> list? Cause you, you've had some big uh, ones. <laughs> I have, man. I, I like to have fun, man. I don't want to look back and see, when I'm 70 like I should have did it. So I try to enjoy life now, man. Uh, my favorite costume that I've wore, I would have to say, is uh, the genie. Mm -hmm. I, I saw I was, that one. I was, I was a genie, man. And my daughter, she actually texted me uh, on the way over here and was like, Dad, you know, what are you going to wear? I got an idea for you. Yeah. <laughs> so have you planned out this year's? Um, I let my daughter usually plan it out, oh, okay. you know, and I, I like to dress up for yeah. her, you know. How long did the genie and, did you do Avatar one year as well? I did. How Avatar. long did they take to get ready? Oh uh, man, both of them took on, on average about three hours. Wow. I had a real makeup <laughs> artist, costume person come in and uh, they they were for a, a party that we had. Yeah. You know, we would have team parties, best costume would win. Obviously, uh, you're getting that every man, year. Man, actually, I did it. I, Who won it? I won it one year. Um, Jawana Man. I don't know if you guys yeah, see the basketball. Yeah, yeah, Him and his girlfriend <laughs> <laughs> was Jawana Man. So it was like a six, seven tight end, you know, dressed up like uh, he had to win. No, uh, that was bravery. <laughs> yeah, that's good, man. It sounds like you're setting the standard, especially in the locker room. You're gonna have a party this year. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna try my best. You mm. know, I want to see what guys are, you know, are feeling. You know, yeah. see if see if they're in that 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 uh, you know that that costume mood. But I think uh, right now, I think we'll definitely have one. Oh, I appreciate you coming on, man. Everyone in London is so excited to see you uh, on Sunday. Blessings, man. Uh, pleasure being here. Wishing you every success, man. Yeah, thank you. Thanks. I'm here with the legend of the game, His Royal Highness. King Henry, welcome to London. Appreciate it, thank you. Vintage King Henry for 29 yards and a touchdown. So how did you get the nickname King Henry? Where did that come from? Yeah, I had went to a, a back in the days, I'd call it Spark Combine for have for uh, high school athletes. Mm. Um, and um, I ended up doing really well and they made an article saying King Henry. And then I put it as my Twitter handle. Yeah. And then in high school, um, I start, uh, having great games and ha had some good years. Then it started sticking and the media back home started picking up on it. And it stuck. And then it translated to college and then the NFL got on my ass to the NFL. So it's been with me for a while. So. Yeah, it's a nice one to have, especially in London. We've got a royalty here. So I know. we're, we're I know. in the presence of greatness. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so in terms of that playing running back, you're built like a defensive end. Everyone in London will want to know, how did that come about? Why did you pick that position? Um. It's so funny because when I was a uh, when I was a kid, um, all my cousins played running back. Mm. So uh, you know, whoever was the oldest, they played running back, and then whoever was under him got that got, got, got their shot. And we used to always play in my grandmother's yard, and I just always wanted to run with the ball in my hand. And uh, over time, I was the last one left in the yard because everybody <laughs> else was playing um, youth football. And then when I got my shot, I played running back, and my older cousin played running back as well. He won a state championship, so. That's always been my desire. Um, people always ask why I didn't play another position, yeah. but I guess running back just always came natural. And, you know, I used to always stiff arm when I was young as well. So that's just something I always love. Playing. Talking about stiff arms, you've baptized a lot of people in the league. And Henry just sends Marcus May out of the club. What's been your favorite stiff arm? I don't necessarily think I got a, a favorite one. I've, I've had some good ones. I think once I get done playing, I get a chance to, you know, look back on which one I like the most, but I'm still playing, so I still yeah. have time to deliver some more, so. So when you're playing, do you just see your mo it's just instinctual, just reaction, and then just suddenly it's just, you put the palm straight on the helmet and see what happens? That just depends on how the defender plays it. Yeah. You know, um, by studying them, you, you, you kind of know how they want to tackle. And then some guys just switch it up and try to go high. And yeah. Know, I'm just like, <laughs> Bad okay, decision. yeah, here we go. <laughs> yeah, for sure. You went to the factory with Nick Saban, Alabama. What was that experience like? It was great. You know, it taught me a lot. Um, um, had to grow up real quick. It's, it's just, they run the system just like the NFL, so which is so cool because once you get to the NFL, it's not a big adjustment at all. As far as academics, I, I got to graduate. I think Coach Saban has a great system of mm. getting players to graduate before they leave or coming back to graduate as well. Um, I didn't play much my first two years. Uh, no, Coach Saban talks about the process. I definitely went through the process. And then mm. my last year, I got to start and was able to do some great things. So love Alabama. I'm roll tight all the way, so. And in terms of great things, the Heisman. Mm -hmm. What was that experience like? That's the pinnacle of college football. NCAA was my favorite game growing up. So anytime I would play, I'll always juice my guy up to like knock it down <laughs> and everything just so I can win the Heisman. 
And then when I got to college, I mean, it was a, I could say it was a goal of mine. I used to always talk about it as a kid. And when I got to high school, but never, never thought it would happen. Yeah. And then my last year, whenever I was in the conversation, I'm just like, man, this is not going to happen. This is not going to happen. And um, ended up being the finalist and winning the award. And I remember sitting there and I was like, man, if I don't win this, I'm coming back. I'm coming back for my senior year. And I ended up winning it, man. It's a surreal moment and something that I, I, I'll never forget and very blessed and fortunate. Because Alabama's got such a history of producing great running backs. Who were the other running backs that, when you were in your freshman year, were giving you advice? Um, definitely Mark Mark Ingram has always been giving me advice for, for a long time. Um, Trent, uh, Eddie Lacy, when, when he was there, I was there with uh, Kenyon Drake and TJ Yeldon. And I actually came in with me and Alvin Kamara came in uh, at the same time. So we used to always have uh, talks about, you know, things we wanted to do when we got to college and eventually make it to the league. So it's been a cool journey. What's that like competing with that caliber of guys? Like if you're going to see the field, you got to be that good. Yeah. Uh, well, we always knew, you know, whenever we came to practice, it was time to compete. Mm. And, um, you know, we all wanted to prove that we were worthy. And, um, you know, we were coming there to uh, be a playmaker. And, um, you know, Alvin ended up transferring um, after our first year. And he ended up doing great things mm. after he left and going to Tennessee. And I actually got to play against him my last year. So, you know, um, I think it's just going to college and trying to live out our dream and yeah. make our mark. All right, we're going to change gears a bit. So now we're going to build your perfect running back. Mm. You ready? Yep. Okay, so first up. Stopping on a dime, so juking, change of direction, jump cuts. That's a no-brainer, Barry Sanders. Oh, what, what do you think makes him so special? It's Barry Sanders. <laughs> Say no more. Say no more. Cut the tape on, and you'll see. Galliano swings it off to Sanders. Eludes the tackle. Goes down to the 20 to the 15. Here's Sanders to the 10, to the 5. Great moves. Touchdown. Toughness. Toughness. Um, Earl Campbell. Mm. And that's a different era, too. Yeah, you go Earl Campbell or or Sweetness. I'm gonna go Earl. Oh, Sweetness. An <laughs> He's an Earl. Yeah, so I'm gonna go Earl. All right. What about speed? I'm gonna go Eric Dickinson. What do you think of the swag for Eric Dickinson? Eric Dickinson had that old school swag. That was that was what was in style back in the day. Would you ever rock that? I could pull it off. <laughs> yeah. All right, last up, stiff arm. You can't say yourself. Or tackle breaker. Yeah, I'm going to have to go with uh, Adrian Peters. And he'll add to that total. Breaking into the open field. And he shoves away one, shoves away another, and blasts his way into the end zone. Pass catching ability, I'll go Marshall mm. Falk. Um, play strength and... Overall, I'm gonna go with Dana Thomas. You can't keep the great ones down. You can get them down, but you can't keep them down. Of all of those, who would you model your game after? Well, I was a big Dana <laughs> Thomason fan growing up, and once I figured out I was tall and not the same size, <laughs> Thomason had to look at other people. But um, I love uh, Eddie growing up, just because I grew up in Jacksonville and the yeah. Jaguars so right down the street, so I got to see him play a couple of times. And um, then as I got older, I was always watching um, clips of Eric Dickerson. Mm. He was big and fast, so I love this game as well. Now, obviously, you're playing on Sunday in Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. You have recently invested in your own MLS team. Mm -hmm. What brought that about? The sport is, is growing so much. I definitely wanted to get my hands um, in there as quick as possible. Um, and, you know, it, it, it's expanding. It's picking up in the U.S., it's so big uh, internationally. So um, just wanted to be a part of something special. And mm. the soccer team over there is doing great things, has the city excited. The fans are always into it. The crowd is always energized. And the, uh, the soccer atmosphere is just different. It's completely you know? different. And I love it. I love going to games. And then Messi coming over there yep. and, you know, shaking, shaking it up a little bit, which is so cool. So hopefully we get some more international players come over there and uh, join the MLS. But it's a, it's a growing league, and I see it getting bigger and bigger. So how does it feel to be an owner? It's cool. I mean, I don't think it, – it, it's, it's – I mean, it, it ain't like I'm, like, wearing a suit and going <laughs> to meetings all, all, all the time. But 
to be able to have that title is um, something, you know, I don't take lightly and uh, very thankful for. No, awesome. Thanks so much for coming on and wishing you every success on Sunday. I hope you ball out. Appreciate it. Thank you all for having me. Thanks, Dave. I'm here with special guest, Ryan Tannehill. Ryan, welcome to London. Yeah, thanks for having me. Excited to be here. How's your flight over been? It was a little long, but uh, it was kind of actually that, that mid-range, right? We had about seven hours total. So uh, for the first you know, little bit, you're settling in, kind of waiting to, to eat, get some food, and then uh, try to get some sleep. And next yeah. thing you know, you're here. So it's a short night, but um, you know, hit the ground running today. Yeah. And, and uh, I'll definitely sleep good tonight. Have you been to London before for a game? Have you played here before? This is actually my fourth trip over here uh, for football. Yeah. I played in two, and then I was injured for the third trip over here. Yeah. Uh, so my third game to play. Um, been over here the same amount of time, so came over Thursday yeah. night each each trip. But uh, excited to be here for the fourth time. Did you manage to do any sightseeing on the other trips? Did you see any of London explore? I haven't seen a whole lot. You know, my first trip over here, there was some sort of um, event downtown <laughs> where they uh, they brought the players down there. It was kind of a rally of yeah. of supporters and everything like that. Um, but it's all a blur to me. I don't remember actually stopping to see yeah. any of the, the tourist sites. So unfortunately, I've been over here four times, haven't seen a whole lot of, of what London out, has man. to offer. I know, I really <laughs> do. My wife and kids are, are, are downtown now, you know, exploring and sending me pictures yeah. from all the sites. But, uh, you know, I need to come back when I have a little more downtime to, yeah. uh, to be able to check it out myself. So Ryan, you've got a big new addition this year, DeAndre Hopkins. What's that been like? Oh, it's been great. D Hop's been great. Uh, he's a fun guy to work with. I enjoy working with him uh, personally. You know, we get along really well and obviously super talented football mm. player. Um, brings a lot of experience and versatility to our offense. You know, played at a high level for for a really long time. Uh, has a great feel for getting himself open, mm -hmm. both in uh, in man and zone coverage. So uh, he definitely adds an element to an offense that yeah. uh, that helps us out a lot. So with having him and Derrick Henry on your team, you're quite spoiled with that, right? <laughs> it's nice, right? You know, you have uh, one of the top backs and one of the top receivers. So uh, definitely, definitely a good combo there, right? I think yeah. they they build off of each other and feed off of each other a little bit, mm -hmm. right? Derrick's doing really well running the football and, and the old lines giving him space and it's going to open up some things mm. down the field for, for DeAndre mm. and vice versa, right? If we're stretching the field vertically with uh, with the pass game, then uh, the box can be a little bit lighter for Derek. So, uh, you know, having a guy uh, on both ways to uh, to attack the, mm. the defense, then uh, it's going to be good for us. So a lot of fans in London will want to know, what's your journey been like to the NFL? What's your journey from playing college football to then now being the starting quarterback in the league. Like, what's that been like? Oh, it's been fun. You know, it's been a long journey here. Now my 12th year in the NFL, um, you know, thinking back to college was a long time ago, but uh, but it's been a fun journey. You know, I, I grew up playing the game, always had dreams of, of playing in the NFL, uh, went to college, you know, was a pre-med major and, and uh, was going to be a doctor if things didn't work out for football. Thankfully, you know, I was able to, to get drafted and kind of uh, fulfill that dream. And then um, it's been a been a fun 12 years. Uh, yeah. Seen a lot, been through a lot, ups and downs, but uh, it's a fun experience. Uh, I love playing the game. I love the, the relationships that it gives you, uh, the experiences that it gives you. So uh, definitely thankful for uh, for every opportunity along the way. So a lot of people in London who are getting into the game wouldn't be too familiar with what it's like being a quarterback in terms of the playbook and play calling and things like that. Obviously, you're a pre-med student, so highly intelligent, knew exactly what you were getting into in terms of that studying aspect of football. For an armchair fan who's trying to like really get into the game, what is the difficult part about the playbook to get your head around? It's a lot of information. You know, I think um, a lot of people think we go to, to training for two hours and then go home. Mm. Uh, but in reality, uh, you know, I'm at work over 12 hours, you know, several days a week. So uh, it's long days. You spend a lot of time uh, in meetings, actually, you know, not not on the field and not doing physical training. Uh, I always say I, I kind of work a desk job where I get to have a recess and run around for, for two hours uh, in the middle of the day. But um, yeah, it's, it's a lot of work, you know, mentally and physically. And, and as far as a playbook, uh, being able to memorize uh, a ton of different concepts and, mm. and things are kind of constantly evolving and changing, right? So you're adding new plays each and every week, um, changing things, right? Something might mean something one week and then something else the next week. So you constantly have to stay up on on how we're attacking the defense and what the plan is. Yeah. Uh, and not just at playing quarterback, you know, every every position has to, you know, maybe not understand that uh, as in-depth as what quarterback mm. has to understand, but, uh, you know, every position is going to have points each and every week where 
um, they have to have a point of emphasis on it and, and yeah. be able to execute on game day. So Ryan, on this show, we have a, a little game we like to play, which is um, I'll give you a couple of NFL archetypes, and then you have to tell me which player, past or present, maybe on your own team, okay. who fits the description best. All right. All right, ready? Okay, so in terms of the leader, who sets the standard for the league or the locker room? A couple of different guys, right? So um, I was I grew up in Texas mm. and um, was young in the '90s. So that's from Tour Aikman. Yeah, was uh, was you know in his prime and Dallas was winning Super Bowls. So I uh, grew up you know watching him, uh, and then I always loved watching Dan Marino. Mm. Um, in the same time period, right in in the '90s, uh, Dan was always a fun guy. He was always airing it out and, and had a ton of yards. Then I ended up going to Miami and, and having a relationship with Dan and, and look up to Dan. So. Um, those two guys are probably the, the two that I looked up the most to. Okay, the next is the vertical threat. Who's had the most speed that you've seen? The most speed? Uh, I mean, Tyreek Hill's probably got to be up there yeah. if he's not not the fastest. Um, this overall vertical threat, I'd probably say Randy Moss, mm. uh, just because he has the speed or had the speed, uh, but he also had the length and size to uh, to go make those 50-50, those, those jump ball yeah. catches. So, um, you know. If it's not him, I don't know who it is, but definitely one of the top vertical threats. In so if you were history. playing with Randy Moss on your team, what would you be thinking? Throw it up to Randy. He's down there somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, you know, he's, if he's not going to run by you, then, you know, he had that length and size to be able to, to go up and make it 50-50. Make it so uh, definitely a guy who could do it all down the field. Okay, and last up, the dark horse. Who do you think throughout history or even now or in your locker room doesn't get the respect they deserve in the league. Oh um, man, there's a ton of guys that are really, really good football players that that for whatever reason don't get get the respect that they deserve. Um, I'll say just in my locker room, Jeff Simmons. You know, a guy mm -hmm. who's uh, a dominant player, uh, is disruptive, uh, kind of sets the tone on defense for us, and, and done it for a couple of years now. And um, you know, he's starting to come around. He's starting to get that respect, yeah. but I still think he's probably. Uh, probably the dark horse a little bit. Why do you think he flies under the radar? I don't know. I don't know why that is. Uh, you know, I uh, I love having Jeff as a teammate. He makes a ton of plays for us. Mm -hmm. uh, he's disruptive, not only in the run game, but in the pass game, he can get sacks, uh, push in the pocket, uh, disrupting the quarterback's timing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, he has everything that you look for in a, in a D tackle and uh, thankful to have him on Titans. And last up, in London, there's a lot of fans of QB1. Will we be seeing you on that at some point? I uh, I don't think so. I, I was almost on it on the first year um, for a few different reasons. It didn't work out, but uh, it's a really cool show, and um, you know I think it gives fans a sneak peek into uh, you know kind of what it's like and and the different ways that you know different quarterbacks kind of go about it. Everyone has their own style mm -hmm. and how they go about it, both mentally and physically, and get themselves ready to go mm -hmm. on a weekly basis. And and you kind of get to see. I only watched a couple episodes, but yeah. you kind of got to see. Um, what all goes into it, right? Mm -hmm. There's a lot that goes into into preparing yourself uh, to get ready to go each and every week. Well, Ryan, it's been an absolute pleasure. Good luck on Sunday, and thanks for coming on the show. Awesome, thanks for having me. That's a wrap for London to NFL on the go. Subscribe to the channel and see you next week. <laughs>